Hey, Tom Bates here. Today I'm going to be working on a 2008 Toyota Highlander. I purchased this vehicle at an auction and I knew that there were brake lights on. It's, it's a 2008, it's a Highlander hybrid. And I figured, hey, you know what, it shouldn't be that bad to fix some brakes on this thing. And then after getting it, you know, all, all the lights are on, um, on the dash and uh, it, it makes a beeping noise. The brake pedal is hard to push. And then uh, doing a little bit of research, I, I found out it's the uh, brake actuator pump that goes out on these. And it's about $3,000 to have them fixed from the dealership. And you have to have special tech stream software with uh, a special cable to bleed the brake systems on these. And uh, you know, 3,000 is almost as much as I paid for the entire vehicle. So I'm going to try to install a new unit that I got from a local uh, local yard. And um, you know, at first I tried bleeding the brakes, I tried changing the relays and, and none of that works. So if you're having this issue, and I'll show you the codes that it's a C125 brake booster pump motor on time abnormally long, C12, C1253 pump motor relay, and C1256 accumulator low pressure. And uh, that's from the TechStream software. And, you know, after reading all the online reviews and everything, um, it, it sounds like it's a pretty common issue. Uh, they had a recall on the years before this with the Highlander and uh, some of the later years of the um, Prius. So, uh, you know, fairly common issue. And I don't know why Toyota hasn't done a recall on it, but, you know, um, I, ha I haven't seen any videos of how to replace this yourself. So uh, we're going to give it a shot today. You know, I've never done this before. Uh, I'm not a professional. And you know your brakes are a really uh, important component of your of your um, you know your vehicle and and safety. So I'm not recommending for anyone to try this at home or or to do this job yourself. Um, but you know I'm making this video for reference of uh, you know I'm trying to do this job for uh, you know a thousand dollars instead of twenty six hundred or thirty six hundred or whatever the dealer wants to to charge. Here's the codes that we're getting from the, the TechStream software. Um, you know, brake booster pump, pump motor relay, accumulator low pressure. So that's the TechStream. This is all the lights that are on the dash. You know, there's that annoying beeping noise and, and all the lights are, are lit up on the dash. So, um, so yeah, uh, well, let's go outside and we'll take a look. So there's the, the new unit that I purchased from the yard. It's not new, it's a, it's a used unit that I purchased at the yard. I got my jump box on there. It's been sitting for a little bit, so um, I put that on. Um, here's the, the unit. I mean, it looks brand new, it looks nice, but uh, it doesn't work. Makes it, when you press the brake pedal, makes a little bit of a, a ticking noise, like there's air trapped in there or something. Uh, like I said, I tried bleeding it with the TechStream software. Uh, didn't do any good. Um, you know, the I'm I'm thinking it's the motor right here that's the the part that's actually bad on it. Um, you can purchase that part alone for what I've seen about five hundred dollars online, and and potentially change that one part and uh, do the the bleeding and and potentially fix the problem i chose just to get the whole unit uh, because uh you know it, it was local it has a hundred day warranty on it and uh you know you never know if it's this part up here or if it's this part here so um, I, I figured I would just swap the whole unit out and uh, the one I bought they said was tested should be good to go um, I know these are so I already took off so this thing's actually looks like it's gonna be pretty easy to uninstall uh, there's a little a couple little nuts down there I believe they were uh, one was a 14 one was a 12 millimeter there's another one down in there that we're gonna be taken off and I believe it's a 12 millimeter um, and then I may be taking off all these lines those are a 10 millimeter um, you know you can get your 
uh, get your uh, brake line wrenches. Um, I just have a normal 10 millimeter. I'm gonna try to use that. I don't have the special brake line ones. I know. Um, there's a couple. Let me let me unhook this cable here real quick. Shut this off. So give me. A so there's a couple um, brake lines here that go into there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch these off with, uh, you know, some vice grips or, or a, a clamp or something uh, with some cushion. I know they, they sell special uh, pliers to, to pinch, you know, brake lines and stuff off. Um, that way, when I unhook them, I don't lose all the fluid out of that reservoir. So um, other than that, I mean, it looks pretty simple. Um, there's this one wire plug here. Looks like you just, you know, lift up on this white piece here and uh pull that off it looks like that will just come unclipped pretty easy so yeah a few few nuts and bolts the lines uh, you know these are supposed to be really high pressure lines um is what it says so i'm gonna make sure i wear some safety glasses and and whatnot when i'm cracking those in case they uh, have a lot of pressure in them uh, like i said I've, I've never done this before i'll disconnect the battery um, before I start, you know, working on this stuff and, uh, and then, uh, yeah, once I'm done and I have that out and I, I, uh, uh, I'll make a little video of putting the new one in is as far as the installation, the uninstall and the reinstall, it looks pretty easy. Like I said, just a couple nuts, these lines here, a couple brake lines here and here. And, uh, you know, I think maybe the one was a 10 and and the other ones were 12s. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I undid this part. I don't think you have to uh, if you're uninstalling the whole thing. But, yeah, that's it. Another thing I was going to mention is when I'm sitting here, you can hear this brake relay fuse clicking over and over. So I did try replacing the relays on it, which uh, didn't do anything, so... Um, I don't know if that's one other sign that that motor is bad, but it does make a constant clicking noise off and on. So one more thing I want to add is you can't do this without the TechStream software. So don't start this project unless you have the TechStream software with the cable. Um, you know, you can get it through the uh, Toyota's website, the TechStream Lite for a, a month subscription or something like that, I believe. Um, some people, you know, get it off of eBay and they, they buy the cable with the software for like $30 or something, which, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that's the best way to, to get the software, but, um, you know, you can't do it because the rear brakes on this, you can't manually bleed them um, like you would a normal car. They're hooked up to a separate motor and have to be bled with the software. So just a little note, you know, if you don't have the software, uh, don't don't attempt to do this until you do have the software. Okay, so we got the old actuator out, and uh, yeah, no, uh, you know, I took those brake lines off, and uh, you know, no brake fluid came squirting out or anything like that. It wasn't pressurized, so not saying that yours won't be, but. Uh, no pressure in there um, you know keep some rags on hand you don't want that brake fluid getting everywhere you know all over your paint and you know make sure you're wearing gloves and safety glasses you don't want to you know get the brake fluid all over your skin and and paint and whatnot so um, a couple things I did want to point out uh, the removal was you know nice and uh, nice and easy uh, nothing nothing hard I mean if you can't get this thing out you probably shouldn't be doing the job it's it's just a uh, a uh, couple nuts, those brake lines, uh, these two brake lines here. Uh, what I ended up doing, instead of clamping this brake line off, I, I put that cap and I, I took it off from the uh, reservoir there because the brake line was, uh, the clamp uh, that was attached to the actuator was pretty hard to get to. So I'm gonna uh, swap that back on to the new actuator before I install it and then it'll be nice and easy to put back on. Um, also on this wire harness down here there's a couple of these little uh, clips here holding that are attached to the actuator so if it's not coming out make sure that you got those clips unhooked. There's uh, one right there and then 
one right up here. And those are nice and easy to remove also. They just have a little, let me see if I can get a closer view. They have this little tab right there, uh, one on each side. You just get a flathead screwdriver and, and push those in and, and pop those off of the actuator. Um, I, I removed the battery just for a little bit of extra room, make sure I had enough room to, to get it out. Um, didn't have to remove anything else, uh, just a, a couple wire harness down there. There was a couple little uh, clips on on the actuator and uh, then your your main your main plug which is this plug you just pull up on the white white piece and it comes off so um, yeah just try to you know keep the the brake fluid from getting all over like I said and uh, you know have some rags and and uh, when I did this bottom hose here I had a little disposable cup that I caught all the fluid with so um, yeah that's it Okay, so we ran into a little problem here. The the guy who pulled the part from the, the part store obviously didn't know what he was doing because if you see this brake line right down here, I pulled it from the reservoir because it was hard to get to, like I was saying. And whoever pulled the part decided to just cut that plastic piece in there and that does not come out. I don't know how, you know, there's no screws holding that in. It looks like there's a, a pin that was pressed in to hold that uh, plastic, to hold that in. So I may have to go take this part back and try to uh, get, get a new one. And so what I think I'm gonna do instead of replacing the whole thing is uh, to just replace this uh, actuator motor. You know, there's a motor right here. Um, there's a motor right here uh, where these wires hook to, you know, where that clip plugs into, and you see it plugs in right there to this, uh, to that motor down there. And I may try to take that out and just replace that motor. You can find that for about $400. So uh, since he messed that stuff up, I may try to just replace that motor itself and uh, see if that works. Okay, so <clears throat> I got back from the auto wrecking yard and they gave me the whole unit for 200 since it was damaged and what I'm going to try to do now is this motor that's right here I'm going to try to swap just the motor itself for the pump and see if that um, if that fixes the problem or not so uh, I'm going to it looks pretty easy there's a couple little Torx screws on there it looks like so I may try to just swap that motor and see if that can get going okay so this is really interesting I just pulled that motor out and there's all this black burnt smelling electrical smelling crap on here some powder electric burnt smell and then I'm looking at this motor here and I'm not sure if it's supposed to turn or not but it just feels froze solid on that motor and there's a strong electrical burning smell so I'm pretty sure that this pump is fried so this thing was really easy to uninstall it was these three screws and then there's this little uh, little cap here that um, you lift up the pins and it, it slides out from this hole here so that's really easy to to remove so here's the other one after we took it off um, you can see there's a little bit of that black material there but not close to as bad as the other one uh, this one still doesn't move so maybe they're not meant to move unless they're powered but um, yeah it doesn't have the smell and as much black as that other one so we'll see if swapping this works okay so I got that motor taken out this one smelled really bad, like burn electronics. The other one did not smell like that. So it might just be that motor. Um, I got everything reinstalled. I'm not going to install all the mounting bolts yet because one thing I was kind of concerned about is potentially there being a leak in this part here and causing that motor to run 
longer than it should which potentially could burn the motor out so I may do the brake bleeding process with everything hooked back up see if everything seems like it's holding pressure working good if I can get the lights and stuff and just see how things work and if for some reason it doesn't work I'll probably try swapping this piece out too I, I didn't want to if I didn't have to uh, but I will uh, try that if this doesn't work and uh, so I may do the bleeding process um, and I'll update you guys when it's done Okay, I have everything reinstalled. Um, I got my jump box on there, my battery was going dead. And so what ended up happening, I got the unit from the wrecking yard and uh, you know, the vehicle was in a wreck and uh, it looks like this part here got damaged on the one that I bought. So I couldn't use this piece. I had to use the, um, I had to use the piece from my old unit. And uh, at first I tried just replacing this motor um, is all, and I bled it and everything, and the check engine lights and stuff came back on, so that didn't work. So I pulled this one off of mine and replaced this piece and this motor here. So I replaced both of those, and then um, I still have the old one of these on there. And uh, I got all bled and everything, put my jump box on batteries going dead and so I'm about to see if that fixed the issue or not um, this is how you bleed the system is with this tech stream software you see where it says actuator has been removed you just click through that it has step-by-step -step instructions pre self-explanatory um, I've already done that so I'm not gonna do it again uh, but you know moment of truth here We'll see if all my lights are on. It's ignition's on, but hasn't been started yet, so. And, yep, all the lights are off. It's not, uh, it's not beeping. It doesn't have the big triangle on it anymore. And, uh, everything looks good, so. Um, yeah, engine just fired on, and everything sounds good. No beeping, no triangle, so. You can't, and the nice part is, since that piece was broken, on the one I got from the wrecking yard, they gave me that whole unit for 200 bucks. So not a bad deal. And uh, so far, you know, everything's looking good. And uh, yeah, so that's it. And 